set out to build Lilu not only as you know for for the for the product, but also because we want to build this brand that is really talking about um, you know women's health and matern like. We did this campaign where we say mother's issues are women's issues. Today, we're in conversation with Adriana, co-founder and CEO at Lilu. My master thesis project, actually. So at the time I was studying at the University of Pennsylvania and I was uh, doing a master's in integrated product design. And I had the opportunity to take that last year to explore a topic that I cared about or was interested in. So as it happened, coincidentally at that point in my life, a lot of women around me, um, professors, um, my previous manager at Morgan, Stanley, the firm where I used to work, and friends from the master's program had just become mothers. And I got to observe them and see firsthand how they transitioned back from maternity leave into very, very active um, lifestyles. Where they were all uh, very uh, career-oriented women, and I could see myself in their, you know, following their footsteps um, five, ten years later down the line. But what really struck me was that these very, very accomplished women around me. Uh, very smart engineers, designers. Uh, they were all really struggling with one specific piece in, in their, I mean, their, their whole life had changed, but breastfeeding and breast pumping was such a, a complicated piece that suddenly their life revolved around, you know, when do I need to feed my child? When do I need to pump? And the logistics about it just seemed like really, really tricky. And I had this kind of like, realization that, wow, I just never thought how it would be like to be um, in, in the shoes of a, of a modern day mom, right? Uh, really busy, always working, multitasking, doing all of those things. So I think that I opened, I allowed myself to, to listen um, to these stories of many, many women. And um, the more I peeled the layers out of the onion, I really, I realized that there was a lot that we could do with technology to make it easier for women to navigate that transition into maternity. So that's kind of what really sparked my interest and my at first curiosity for the space. And the more I learned, the more uh, passionate and strongly I felt about the need to improve technology for women's health in general, but in very specifically around uh, post maternity, post, postnatal um, health, right? Um, so you've seen some uh, version or variation of this, but um, I, I, before I even, I, I mean, I guess you could see the product there a, a little bit, but before I show you that, I, I wanted to show you something that for me was um, really interesting, <laughs> is that if you look online for how moms are experiencing pumping, you will get a quick snapshot of how that can be. Um, it can be like really painful and it can be stressful. So I think that really captures uh, a lot of the things that we are trying to solve at the end. Um, so um, also before I, I dive a little bit uh, deeper into the product, right? Uh, we really anchored that first product in a lot of research, both scientific research as well as customer feedback and like a lot of user interviews. So the picture on the right is actually of um, a mom that we interviewed in person. And we did that with dozens of moms. Like I actually um, sat down next to moms as they were pumping uh, to ask them how they were feeling, ask them, you know, like maybe tips and tricks and things that they found that had worked uh, well for them, as well as just sometimes observing. and. Um, you learn so much from, from that. And one of the key things that we learned is that um, there's so much about, you know, you have to sit up straight and like almost, you know, bend forward slightly a little bit. But hands actually played such an interesting part of the process and sometimes without people realizing. So in this picture, you can see a woman that's 
holding up the bottles of, of the breast pump, um, even though she has a bra that supports it. But what she's actually doing is, is massaging a little bit and adding a little bit of pressure. So <clears throat> from all of those observations, one of the key things we thought is like, okay, if we could truly free mom's hands while breast pumping, because in reality, you know, <clears throat> every time you're pumping 20, 30 minutes, even if you just want to be on your cell phone to, you know, catch up with friends or news or, or many moms actually need to be working. So we, we really felt that trying to automate that massage um, would make a big difference. So here are some of the very early uh, prototypes. And we went through, I mean, this is just a small snapshot. We went through dozens and dozens and dozens um, of iterations. And we would go back to the drawing board and test them with real users and so forth. So I wanted to show you that um, because there is a lot of work that you have to do uh, both with users, but then you, when you start trying to think about how to manufacture or produce things, you'll realize, oh, this doesn't work at scale. Um, so there's a lot of like uh, iteration that needs to happen. Um, so this is how it um, ended up looking for our first version. So the concepts are still all very similar, right? We have the soft goods, which is a bra. Um, actually, you know, designing a, a textile like products and soft products also have their own um, set of challenges. In, in many ways, we thought like, oh no, the real hard thing will be the hardware piece. Um, but they, they all had their complexities uh, that, were, that were really interesting and um, sometimes surprising. Uh, but yeah, what you can see here is a picture of the, the bra, right? And the, the, there's the air bladders and what we call a controller that slips in and out of the bra so that, uh, you know, when moms need to wash the bra or something, it, um, it's easy to remove. Um, so yeah, there were a lot of like, uh, I guess, um, reasons why we ended up making it a bra as opposed to like a breast pump or as opposed to like a vest. Uh, but I think like a bra, for instance, really, when you hear the, the word bra, you understand that it's for women, that you wear it, um, you know, on top of your breasts. <laughs> so like, um, but in reality, it's, um, it's, it's actually a device, right? So it is a, a um, FDA class one um, device. But I think a lot, a lot goes beyond also the, the design of a product, right? But how do you name it? How do you market it? How do you message it? Um, you know what the benefits are. Uh, can, I, I'm going to dial back a little bit and and ask about sort of you know how did you how did you get your first run direct to consumer and like what would be some of your tips for other hardware founders um, in terms of taking a pain point into a design into a prototype and finally making it ready for manufacturing. Yeah, so, um, I mean, we started with research. I keep going back to it because it was so important, especially as somebody that, you know, I had not lifted firsthand. So it was so important to get that user feedback from the beginning. And I would say, like, the other thing is that, well, my background is actually more in soft software, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm a, uh, I was a software developer before I started Linu. So I think there was a lot around, like, the development principles about, like, you know, trying to iterate fast as possible that I think I was I was able to bring that mentality into the way that we did hardware so those pictures that I showed you of the different like prototypes and iterations we would always be testing but we would also be gathering data and information and every single time you know we would have a new version or a new prototype um, we would kind of try to quantify you know how like how many people had like used it and how much x or y or c they liked it and the like you know, milk improvement uh, or out, uh, improvement in milk um, output that we saw. So the, all of that was really helpful for a couple of things. A, it would allow us to kind of get a sense of market demand for it, especially with such a new product. It was so hard to know, like, I mean, would you, would you want it? Would you buy it? Would you pay for it? If so, how much would you pay for it? And in that process, as we were also um, gathering, collecting information, well, we were also wondering how how are we going to finance, you know, producing a, a, a brand new product and uh, and finance our operations. So we started raising money 
probably like, I mean, pretty, pretty early. We, when we started Lilo, we, we had a little bit of money in the bank from grants and prices. Uh, so that is something that I always encourage um, entrepreneurs to look for. But I mean, at some point, building a hardware um, product, right? It's, it's very, it's very cash in, in, uh, intensive. So all the data that we had gathered along the way, the surveys we had done, the interviews we had done, allowed us to then go and talk to investors and even though we didn't have a product in the market or, or, or a prototype ready to be manufactured, we always had something to back up our story. Like, um, and I think that was very, very important because, um, you know, um, we, we did end up running a pre-order campaign, which I think I'll, I'll talk about it in a little bit. But even to reach the stage of the pre-order campaign, uh, we wouldn't have been able to had we not uh, raised some funds from um, Private uh, private investors before that, and the data and the user research were so important uh, to be able to even raise that that, that early capital. Um, then to finance the product, to actually finance the, the production run, um, we by the time that we had already finalized almost <laughs> finalized the design. Um, we had already identified a, a manufacturer to do it and we had already done a round of samples with them. Um, at that point, we decided uh, we could run a pre-order campaign. I think a lot of other hardware um, founders that are direct to consumer have, a, I would say, luxury of running pre-order campaigns much earlier than, much, much sooner than having your manufacturer identified already. We didn't have that luxury because we are in the maternity market. So if we're promising to deliver something uh, 12 months out, well, parents and moms don't even know if they're expecting, right? Uh, we, and by the time you actually know that you're expecting, it's after the first trimester. And so the baby's going to be born within six months. So we didn't have a lot of time to, to play. And even though Kickstarter and Predator campaigns are typically known to... to um, uh, to be late, we just didn't have that luxury. We just wouldn't feel even comfortable marketing something that we know that we wouldn't be able to deliver. So we launched our campaign at the point that we were like, we absolutely know we we can. Um, we, we still had delays. And even though we had like estimated that it would take us like six months from, from the point the campaign finished to the, the point to deliver, uh, we still had a, a little bit of delays, but not not that many. Uh, but I would say for other hardware founders in the direct-to-consumer space, uh, pre-order campaigns are wonderful. Uh, you learn a lot in the way, um, potentially, right? If you haven't finished the design fully, you can use a pre-order campaign to learn from your customers. And for us, it was kind of the final validation that we needed to know, like, okay, are we going in the right direction, right? Um, I think that until people don't pay for the product, uh, I mean, that's the ultimate test, right? Are people willing to, I mean, everyone will say like, yeah, I love this idea. If, you know, I wish I had it, you know, but the real proof is in the in the pudding, right? Are people going to take out their credit cards and make that purchase decision? So um, uh, pre-order campaigns, I think, are, are, are something to be taken uh, pretty seriously. And especially now, especially in times like this, where um, financing from other sources might be a little bit limited <laughs> or delayed, uh, you can still always run a pre-order campaign. I think that's brilliant. I, I, you know, building the community before you actually build the product and building the community before you actually manufacture the product. And, and I think what you're, what, what you're also sharing is it's very possible. It's very possible to build a community before you get your product into production. Um, and, and getting them behind how it's yeah. made, how it's designed, and how it works. Um, how about now? Sort of like, you know, now that you've made your first iteration, and congratulations, I think that's a huge milestone. And, and you got the branding, the manufacturing, the direct-to-consumer, all of that right. So looking forward, um, what do you see are some of the challenges or opportunities for Lilu? So the challenge, I think, for... Um for us, and I would say many of the early stage companies of the founders that I hope will be listening, right? It's sales, right? I think at some point when you have a product out there, but we were in 
product development mode for such a long time. Um, and even though we've been building that community and we've been building not only the community of users, but the community of potential brand partners, the community of uh, potential distribution channels. Now is the time to convert all of those to, you know, like before we had brand partners where we're like, yeah, we'll do like cross blogging and that's fantastic. But now let's see, how can you actually continue to further those partnerships and then have them be still mutually beneficial, but where you can actually monetize them, monetize them, right? Um, or, or, or your potential sales distribution channels. Now it's like, okay, now is the time to go and, you know, from like a conversation, now you have to go into like contract and negotiation, negotiating those contracts in a way that, um, you know, we're still early. So at some point, you know, maybe you feel like, well, we don't have all the negotiation levers we would like to have. Um, but, you know, it'll, it's still important for us to continue to, to look at those sales channels and, and try to get them started, you know, in the best way possible. So, so I think, you know, like cr looking at everything we've built until now, it's not only the product, but those relationships and now transforming them into actual, um, you know, business and like revenue, revenue channels. Um, in terms of also uh, the, the product, right? Um, there, we're still learning about it now that the product's out there in the wild. I mean, it doesn't, it, that doesn't mean that we're also, you know, that it stops, you know, we're, we're still gathering information about how it's doing, what, how, what can we do better? Um, even though the first version of the product is, is done and already out there. And thankfully, we also have inventory, which means that, you know, we have to move that inventory. But we can possibly still improve, like, our user manuals, our user instructions, our user videos um, to make it easier for people to understand um, how, to, how to use it. So I think the challenge is, how, like, how do you continue to, um, like, all your... Grow, grow the sales channel while you know also acknowledging that I mean with the first product out in the market you're still learning you know like it's not like now that first product out in the market you know like we can start selling in Target and Walmart and then like bye bye baby we're working towards that uh, but you know it's still it's still a, a it's still a road that we need to walk and learn from that just as we learned how to set up our supply chain how to work with manufacturers how to work with um, third-party logistics, right? All of those were learning um, curves for us. And I would say it's the same with, uh, with sales and, and distribution. I, I'm very excited for you. I, and, and, you know, hearing about kind of your journey, I, I knew you will be very successful in the sales process as well. Um, what are some of your target sort of um, sales channels for 2020, 2021? Where would you like to see um, the Lilu massage bra. Yeah, I mean that's a great question. I think um, we have some uh, so many places where we can be. So I always said that that's kind of the blessing and the curse of, of a little bit of the maternity slash medical space because we're in maternity. But again, as a medical device, there's like this whole world of like medical device distributors that exist. But I think we have to strike the right the right balance, right? We we set out to build. Lilu, not only as you know for for the for the product, but also because we want to build this brand that is really talking about um, you know women's health and maternity. Like we did this campaign where we say mothers' issues are women's issues uh, as well, and we want to use Lilu as a platform to continue to build awareness around that, to continue to um, you know invite other women to uh, participate in, you know, building products for women by women. And I, I mean, we would love to, you know, have products built by like by moms for moms. So the direct to consumer channel will always be important for us. I mean, building a even stronger and bigger community around our website is still a really big goal for 2020 and 2021. However, I think to be able to scale like faster and to be able to move the product at large volumes you know realistically to do that we need to also have some like wholesale accounts so i think we start with the wholesale accounts that make sense you know hopefully one day like a, a bye bye baby you know like still playing in this specialty maternity space but you know um 
what we would love is for this product to one day uh, be like reimbursed by insurance and things like that. So, you know, working through that um, and to begin with, like one of the big, big goals that we reached this year also was our product in the US. There's something called uh, the flexible spending accounts and um, health saving accounts. So at least the product is eligible for that. It's not the same as being insurance reimbursed, actually very far from it. But it's still like, you know, a great way to, um, uh, it's, it allows parents to use um, some of their pre-tax money to purchase this product. And things like that, that I think are really, again, valuable for, uh, for us and for the, for the parent, right? Because, I mean, breastfeeding and breast pumping products are kind of essentials. So, I mean, they should be, you know, there should be um, some government incentives or some government support to be able to, to get products like this. Uh, so, yeah, I think eventually, um, you know, we'll continue to build a direct-to-consumer, continue to work in the maternity space. But again, to really be able to grow at, at, a, at, a, at the scale that we'd like, it'll be important to work with um, those medical device entities and hopefully, yeah, build, build our path for a product like this to be reimbursed by insurance. Because in reality, every mom that needs it should be able to get it. And the reality is of like building a hardware company for us and launching at this scale means that if we're going to be sustainable as a company and we're going to have the right profit margins, you know, one of the considerations was uh, the pricing and the pricing doesn't allow it, you know, for, you know, uh, a mom with like a potentially lower income to get it. So I think eventually, you know, uh, our, our, our goal that probably beyond 2020 and 2021 even would be that there's a version of the legal bra that, you know, again, is reimbursed by insurance. And, you know, like that's, that's kind of the goal. Um, how are we going to get there? It'll take some time. So right now, really focus on the B2, growing that B2C um, and some of the accounts that, again, hopefully some of the maternity specialty wholesale distributors. I am right behind your vision. I totally believe that taking care of women helps us take care of our young and our old. Um, and, I, and I love your, your, your vision of having everyone be able to have access to intelligent and helpful products to live better. Um, thank you so much today for sharing with us what you're doing at Lilu and um, hope to catch up with you later this year to learn more about how everything's going. Yeah, I would love that.